one, good energy, but you got to have quality. And I thought today the combination of both was very good for a first day. Um, and, and there's a lot of anxiousness that goes into today with everyone, uh, not just the, uh, the freshmen. So to have them play and, and not be um, a little bit, bit held to skelter, which oftentimes it is, I thought that was a really good sign that this team can play with the, the energy and, the, and, and, that, and that passion, but also have good decision-making and quality. Uh, it's still early, but are there any freshmen you standing out right now? I like this freshman group a lot. Um, you know, it's really early. It's our first session. Um, there's no doubt that with Austin Poncho, um, you know, leading the group in our, in our two mile just shows again how prepared and how uh, focused this young man is. Had a very good spring coming in early. Um, no, no question, Andrew Gutman showed well in, in his first day along with uh, Reese Buckmaster, uh, another example. I thought Jeremiah had good moments. Those are just to name a few. So really good start to our freshmen. They, uh, they're ready to come in and push. Who do you view as the leaders on the team? I think this is a collection. I think it's, uh, it's a strength of our team. We talk about balance in our team. And I think there's balance in our leadership. Um, you need a really, really strong one, um, or you need a collection is the way I like it. And if you have two or three and everyone's kind of not quite on board with them, then it's not as effective as the group leadership. And I think the um, there's some young leaders. There's some guys that have been here with Sparks for quite a while. Femi's really stepping up. Um, that's been a gradual process for him. Mm -hmm. Come very organically through time. Um, and there's no doubt that uh, guys like Derek Krevenston and, and Colin Webb and others, uh, Tanner showing, Grant Lillard is, a, is just a sophomore. Um, has natural leadership qualities. Foldesy stepping up in that area. So it, again, I could name several more. It's a collection of it. Uh, specifically, captains, we're, we're not quite sure what we're going to do at this moment. Um, but to me, a title uh, does, does not does not provide what we need. It's it's the, how you perform and how you what you do. Um, no different than respect. It's earned and it's not given. So these guys are doing that, and we'll, we'll specifically give some roles out moving forward. But right now, we're not concerned about that. We're concerned about the leadership in general, which is good. You talked about the way these guys came out of the gate. How, how important is the, the first few practices being strong with, with such a limited amount of time you have before games begin? Well, I mean, that's our biggest challenge as a, as a fall sport. I mean, we don't have much time to um, to do all the things that you want to do. You, you just got to pick your top five or six areas. You got in. You got to get big quick to see what it looks like in in, in the game. Um, that's why the spring we do a lot more smaller, but. We got to get big pretty quickly and see and evaluate um, as best we can because we have, you know, we, we play an exhibition in less than a week, um, and those results are are not the end all be all. But we need to make sure that we're seeing where the guys are, are, are fitting within the depth. So a lot of it is, um, and it's an evaluation and knowing that they're a good fit group. We can we don't have to spend as much time on. Uh, we can keep our sessions a bit shorter. Um, the time we give off can be uh, adjusted based on that, so it allows us to get, you know, maybe more into some of the tactical concepts that aren't quite as physically demanding, but more on the mental side. Uh, last spring, you were using kind of a false nine uh, with Tanner up top. Is that still what you imagine you're going to be doing at the start of the season? Um, I, I don't. I think that's one of our options. I do feel with Femi, um, you know, and a Ben Maori, um, the, the strength and size that they bring to our striker gives us a different look and, and certainly using Tanner up there situationally I could see us doing uh, but Tanner's very good about getting the ball deeper and running and, and scoring from distance um, and with again Femi and Ben's strength and ability to stretch the field I see those two as, as more likely options um, initially and that's again without looking at our whole group and we're, we're still speculating we haven't seen it yet but we, we know Femi can we know Femi can play there and be very good at it and his game is, is made again more strides um, his, he's confident and when Femi's confident and, and fit as he is then I expect a really nice nice season from Femi. How much do you think going to Kansas City and training there helped him this summer? I think it's a validation I mean you, you need that as a player you need to be around that level and understand that I am I can play with these guys not just hold my own but compete and know that I can push for a roster situation to come next January when he'll get this opportunity. So it was the perfect scenario for us. We wanted to, to throw him into that arena to see how he would do. And the feedback from him and the coaches were excellent. Um, 
he came back with his chest out a little bit like, I, I know I can do it, but also sh opened his eyes and Femi's as humble as they come. He, he knows what those areas need to improve. And, and we say it, but he need, you need to feel it, you need to see it, you need to experience it. And that was a great learning curve for him for that week. Coach, with another year of Colin uh, in, in net, what kind of improvements has he shown since taking over the starter's role way back when to even where he is now entering preseason? He's gaining experience. He's gaining leadership. Um, he's seen different situations. I think with goalkeeping, that's the, that's the most important part is that the more you get into – that's why the goalkeepers are typically better as they get older and just our sport. And no different than in college, your, your keepers are, are, are peaking at the end of their time here. Uh, as we saw with Louis Softner is a, a fantastic example. Um, it, it wasn't year one, year two. So Colin is moving in that direction. He's got some great qualities. I do feel that his goalkeeping core as, is as competitive as we've had um, since I've been here. And Colin is going to be pushed. And that's, again, what we want. So uh, he, he, I think we're in, we're in a good position with our goalkeeper right now. You mentioned the quality of play today. Does that sort of speak to the level of competition that you've got going on out here? Well, the competition is is uh, is uh, making me smile. I mean, it. There, and I don't know. Again, you always say you you, you 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 get excited because you see what the potential of the group can be. But the the what ifs, the the tactical adjustments we can make in a game, um, uh, I think are are much greater this year heading in based on what we've seen and certainly scouted our own team and understand what we have coming back so this is a uh, and the competition again we talk about all the time these guys love it I mean, they compete and it, it's not it's not a it's not a uh, it's not something that, it, that makes guys play with anxiousness and nerves it's bring they have to bring every day and there is no doubt in some positions a lot of positions that they they need to no, the, the, the scrimmages are, are important. I mean, like I said, we'll go big at least one session a day um, and, and do a lot of situational things out of that, evaluate positional, the, the, the scenarios, the what ifs, we, as we call it. Um, so we'll sit a few of our regulars potentially and get some of the other guys. Can't make too many changes within a group because you gotta know how it looks with all the other experience pieces in there. So that's the challenge and it, things are really close. So. You know, to kind of call a first team versus a second team, um, it's a hard deal right now. Um, there's a few certainly standouts that have proven that. Um, but the, 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 the remainder of the, the balance of the team from front to back is as, as, as competitive as we've seen in the years. Who do you envision stepping into the roles that maybe Patrick and Dylan and Jamie left when they graduated last year? Positionally speaking? Yeah. Um, well, certainly Phil Fives had a fantastic spring as a left back. Um, Andrew Gutman can play there, our incoming freshman, who's I think is as talented as any freshman um, in the country. Um, he can play left back. So that position, um, we have two options uh, that we're looking at immediately. Jamie Vollmer, uh, we, we, we're really well positioned in our wide midfield positioning with the options. Now Jamie had four years of experience. He was incredibly explosive. He had a swagger to him. He had the throw in. We, we don't necessarily have that. But when it comes to the positional offerings we have, I think we're in pretty good shape. We're gonna miss Jamie, but we're pretty good shape in, in our own options because there's gonna be really good form of the group that will be able to fill that. Um, and, and you know, those are those are the two. And then Dylan's rule, you know, is the heart and soul of, of any team is you know how is your midfield shape, how's the spine of the team, and um, you can't replace that four years again. Dylan Lax wasn't that as a freshman. It took him a few years to understand that, uh, but I like. The options that we have presented with uh, a Frankie Moore, um, we have a Jeremiah Gutierrez that can play there. Uh, Reese Buckmaster is a player that can play there. Those are the three initially we're looking for. Um, we've also moved, moved Matt Foldesey back there situationally. Um, so three or four players. I'd say right now Frankie Moore being from the spring. Um, now we're not even mentioning Jack Griffith who played you know, quite a bit in that role last year. So it's, uh, it's going to be a battle. I, I don't know right now. It would be too premature to speculate fully on who's going to kind of take that reign. Oh, he's confident. I mean, Grant's already confident in a really good way. Um, but that, again, validation, he, I think, walks away feeling I was the, the best back in that, in that group. And by feedback, we got very good feedback from the coaches. So Grant is ready to roll. Um, 
he is, we're expecting a, a fantastic so- sophomore campaign from Grant. And he now, I think, already getting to travel a little bit and, and training with some professional teams as well. Also, got to see and feel firsthand the small details of what is important for him to reach his next step and, and level um, to make us better. And that, again, was a good, it was a good summer for him. And he came back ready to go.